Got it. Recording going. Okay, so you, you see the, the quote on the, um, on the screen. Uh, Mentoring is a bit of a subtle thing. And, 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 and it and probably means different things to different people and we can unpack that. Uh, and, but in, I like this quote because I think mentoring is about, you, you know, interacting with somebody else in a way that helps you to create your better self. It does start, you know, you, you interacting with other people. They might give you great suggestions or comments or whatever. But I, you know, I think mentoring is about you. That's the way I like to think about it, anyway. Um, so I think it's worth just thinking about what makes good mentors. And yes, mentors bring experience, right? Great. Um, preferably those mentors understand the innovational startup game. And, and by the way, if they don't, that doesn't mean they're not a good mentor. It just means that you need to understand that about them. Um, so think about your, when you're engaging with mentors, think about their world. What, what do they bring, right? Everyone's got strengths and weaknesses. Uh, what do they bring? Um, Mentors, a good mentor is actually where you form some sort of connection relationship. There's a, there's a chemistry. It, it's sometimes it's a bit subtle where, you know, it, it's a good conversation. It's not necessarily always agreeing, but, you know, there's that sort of, there's, you get this feeling. Some people you get a feeling and it's like, I, I'm getting something out of this conversation. It's really good. Uh, others, you like, I think they're from a different world. Uh, values alignment. If you if your values are deeply different from the values of the mentor, it's going to be really hard to form a deep relationship. For example, um, I think great mentors challenge. They challenge you, and you emerge thinking, "I want to be better in this way, or do differently in this way." I want to. Does that make sense? You've been challenged a bit, and and it adds something to you. I think that's what good mentorship feels like uh, by the way as a you know we, we might ask Anne Marie about the how that feels from the mentors uh, side at, at some point that that could be an interesting conversation I just want to have in your mind these key thoughts um, what what's and the, what's the right mentor for me look also so, you, you probably should get mentoring or have mentoring type relationships with a number of people and not just the super smart and experienced people. Sometimes you get great mentoring from your peers. They just bring in a different perspective that's super valuable. So um, think of that whole mix. Um, I, I think in mentorship that you should be, you, you should be sort of uh, active in this. Don't wait to be mentored be active, that means seeking conversations uh, or deciding, no, this one's not for me and, and, and actively deciding to focus your relationships different in a different area, right? If it's not the right person and I want the, the, the junior person, the entrepreneur, the person being mentored should really make sure they feel like they're in control of the situation, okay? Um, a um, couple of couple of things when you're meeting a mentor, especially early on, early on, find out the background. Do you know what they've done? It's generally pretty easy to find on LinkedIn or other Google searching. Right? If you and and it could be super helpful if you you look there and think, oh, this person's also, you know, uh, been a lawyer, or this person's also done this or that. That can help you to ask good questions of them. I think it's always good to at least start with a couple of issues or questions that you've got in your mind. Now, you might also say to that person, what else should we talk about? Or, you know, uh, they might just say, tell me all about what's going on. That's fine too. Um, when, when, you're, when, something, when you're talking about something, just really um, don't hesitate to ask questions. Dig in a bit more. I think I understand that. But does that mean this, right? Make sure, you know, and that, that's, that's how you get the best of it. Some, somebody will sometimes say something really insightful to you and you sort of half get it. 
dig more, ask more, why? How, do, how did that happen? Could you tell me more about that? Uh, mentors, in my experience, mentors also like anecdotes. Ask them, so could you tell me an example when that happened? I, I think that can be super powerful. Um, and here's my other last one that I think a lot of people fail to do is take a couple of notes. Just could be a handwritten scroll, something. And because you're having this rich, amazing conversation, uh, it's very easy to forget something really awesome that happened in that conversation. So just a couple of quick jots and then reflect on the meeting later and go, oh, this is what I can act on. Oh, I forgot that they said that. Yeah, great. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of encouraging you to take notes and reflect on the meeting afterwards. Not for a long time, and I don't mean note down every word, but just a couple of things. Now, this is slightly more controversial, but I'm going to say it. Uh, not all mentorship is good. It's not all good for you. And a good uh, person who's a good mentor for others may not be the right mentor for you. You've got to be on the alert for when it's not a right match. Right? I encourage people to get multiple viewpoints. If a mentor says, you just got to do this, well, that's a viewpoint. Uh, in the end, it's your business. You're the founder. You decide. But take things into account. Learn from it. But don't go to people and say, tell me what to do. That's not you being the founder or the leader. Um, you know, um, now there's a time to really get expert advice and, 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 and you're, you know, on a particular technical matter or whatever, your accountant says you must do these th three steps to comply. Then you, okay, that's when you just do it. But uh, you really should, um, you know, collect the information and make your own decisions. So be aware, you know, even the most experienced, smartest person in the world doesn't know your business like you do, right? And they might say something in good faith, you should do this, challenge it, learn, um, process it, and you, you might end up doing what they suggest or you might go slightly differently. As <laughs> I don't know about Anne-Marie, she might agree with this, but certainly in my experience, I've as, a, as someone who mentors people, I've sometimes found that frustrating. <sighs> I think I know they should be, but you know what? Sometimes I'm wrong too. So, um, right. It's, you know, so be in, be in charge, be in control. Um, look, that's all I, that was the quick surf through that I wanted to tell you a couple of thoughts just to condition this, um, start the conversation, but now let's make it a real conversation. And first I'll introduce uh, Anne-Marie, uh, Anne-Marie's been uh, one of the mentors in the Griffin Accelerator program since its founding in 2014. Uh, she's been uh, a chair of Capital Angels. Um, uh, she's um, uh, uh, got a long, long, long history, which you can all check out on LinkedIn, um, and um, also very active in the R&D tax incentive space, uh, a great person to come to for technical and expert advice in that area as well. Um, uh, Anne Marie, when you're thinking about me, or did I miss anything important? Um, I don't know. Oh, maybe, maybe my AICD role. Um, yes. Elise on the on the call. Um, she's on the divisional council with me, but I'm the ACT president president, and I am on the board of, of quite a few different entities, including some um, technology companies, and. I think that's probably yeah, good relevant uh, stuff to hear. Uh, governance and boards and mentor, it's slightly aligned, isn't it? Because sometimes there's a, you know, there's that hard mm. and fast the board says and there's a coaching relationship sometimes. Well, Aaliyah, Aaliyah yeah. will agree with me when I say you got to start your governance early. It doesn't have to be the same governance that BHP has in place, though you probably find it's better if you started it as a startup. It can be a governance light, but... Uh, you should be starting to look at directors and I've, have you got the right directors and are you having the right meetings and et cetera, et cetera. And are you documenting things as well? So right. definitely. So when, when we use the word governance, for those who don't know, that means having a company board with directors who are in charge of the company on behalf of the shareholders. Uh, I'll put a link onto the Australian Institute of Company Directors website 
Um, it's a, there's some fabulous resources there and some high quality, albeit not cheap, training options. Um, and, and, and just one thing to round out the term governance, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of what I do with clients rather than um, stri strictly R&D tax incentive that work these days is R&D governance because that's about how you document what you're doing, how you make the decisions that you make about where you're going to put your money uh, because you can throw good money after bad if you're pursuing the wrong goals and uh, if you're a technology company and investing in a lot in your technology, you don't want to throw good money after bad. So governance can be quite a broad term. In the purest sense, yes, it's the board and your relationship with your board and how you manage the company. But in a broader sense, it can also uh, trickle down to elements of what you do in your company. Um, Anne-Marie, thinking about, because um, you've, you've mentored a lot of people over the years, what's a What's a top tip you'd sort of start the conversation with? Something that people should think about? Well, I think I'm going to start with an anecdote. Um, oh. I'm going to start with um, an example of, I think, um, is one of the healthiest approaches that I've ever seen to mentorship. And I'll name names to, to, to name the guilty. Um, and I'm talking about Clyde and Dane Rathbone. Mm. Um, anyone who's a rugby tragic might know Clyde, but Clyde was a professional rugby player, Dane a professional comedian. So not exactly what you'd uh, spring to mind as being entrepreneurs, um, but they had a really, you know, out there idea, a moonshot, Mars shot idea. And they went about... Uh, testing their concept with a huge number of people and the first in the first instances when they presented their concept people shot them down because of Clyde's profile they even got bad press about what they were doing but they were very passionate and committed to their goal how they achieved that goal they were perfectly open to discussing and they pivoted many 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 times and I think that they both had a really healthy attitude to not only their own business, but to mentoring. They passionately believed in their end goal, but they were totally open to finding out the best way to achieve it. They sought advice far and wide, but they never suffered from what I would call mental whiplash, which means they talk to one person and act on that person's advice, then talk to the next person who said something different and act on that person's advice. They talk to a lot of people. Oh, you there, Anne-Marie? Ah, the internet doesn't always work. Should no doubt reconnect, no doubt reconnect. Um, uh, while we're waiting for that Anne-Marie to sort of reconnect onto that, um, I, I, I remember vividly talking to Clyde one time uh, and I, I sort of said, look, you know, I, I wanna challenge you in this particular area and I was trying to be a bit gentle about it, and, you know, uh, and he said, look, when you make a mistake on the rugby field in front of 50,000 fans, you know it, um, I, you know, <laughs> feel free to be blunt. And, and I mean, it's a funny story in a way he'd had that life experience, but what he, was, what he really said to me is he was trying to give me permission, Craig, I, I don't want the sugar-coated version. I really want to know what you think. Uh, he might not have agreed with it. And in, in fact, I think in some cases didn't agree with it. That's fine, you know. Um, and so I think I like just to extend Anne-Marie's story there a little bit, um, giving, giving someone permission to be a bit blunt, especially once you know them, you know. And, Can I? And, yeah. yeah. So, oh, you're back. You're back. Excellent. Yeah, I'm back. I'll try to finish off what I was saying. Yeah, so please, please, please they, they dispassionately took the advice that was given them and worked out what worked for them. Yep. Have I lost everybody? No, you're still there. Oh, good. They they also, for a lot of entrepreneurs, you present your... You there? Ooh. 
Ini uh, Claire's asked on the chat, what's the business they created? Uh, they started with a business called karma.wiki. I think it's still online. And then it, they one of their big pivots was to letter and they were writing, they were creating conversations, conversations, high quality conversations with people and writing letters of gratitude and doing some amazing things. Um, oh, there you are. You muted, Emery. Yeah, sorry. I saw you all freeze on the screen. I don't know. I've got a problem with my internet. So if it drops out, I'll come back on my phone where I don't have to use um, the Wi-Fi. But um, I don't know if you heard me say that with a lot of entrepreneurs, you present your baby to the world and then you're insulted when someone tells you your baby's ugly. Claire, uh, Clyde and Dane were very, very good at, at allowing people to tell them their baby was ugly and saying, oh, well, how would I make my baby more beautiful? And so I think they had the right approach to it. They were passionate about what they were doing and driven, but they were dispassionate about how they got there. So I think they were really good at seek, and that, that's the other key point I was wanting to make is they engaged widely. Think of a mentor. You can have a mentor like Claire I can see on the line. Claire and Yuki and I meet every week to have a discussion. So we're building a real relationship and that mentorship will probably go on even past Griffin. But you might have a mentor with just one meeting. That mentor might just be someone you meet on an aeroplane. It might, well, not at the moment, but in the future when we can travel. Soon. <laughs> it, might be, it might be someone you interact with in the gym. So mentoring conversations can happen anywhere and they can be value in, valuable in and of themselves. So always seek mentors. Mentors that you build a relationship with are a bit different from those brief interactions but also consider those brief interactions as opportunities for mentorship dr sam prince does anyone know dr sam prince amazing person the founder of zambreros when i first met sam here in canberra canberra boy went to university in melbourne did his medical degree decided to found a zam found zambreros to uh fund not only to provide healthy fast food, but to fund feeding um, people in underdeveloped in countries, he believed totally in the second question. Every single person he met, he would ask another question of. And the connections that he made and the people who helped him, and he went from being, when I first met him, which would have been, I was at EY and I was taking him through the Entrepreneur of the Year program. So it was probably in about, uh, 2008, I'm guessing, you know, he had five Sambrero stores. Two or three years ago, he was one of the 10 richest under 30s who had developed his own company and was worth like 400 million and just was, you know, friends with Elon Musk and the Atlassian guys, etc. And his key to success was always asking the second question always finding out the person about the person he was talking to and always talking to them in depth about what they did and trying to learn from that. Uh, what a great tip, uh, particularly that, that uh, second question, ask another question. I love that. Uh, and, and, and you can take it outside what might be traditional mentoring type conversations and you can do that in other conversations as well. Um, yeah. And be lateral. I mean, where you learn the most is lateral conversations where you least expected to. Um, you know, a lot of people ask how you approach a mentoring relationship. And I would say that depends. That depends on you and your mentor. There are some mentors who are very time poor and they want you to come with a list of questions and they want to answer the questions and then we want to go. That can be valuable but I'm not sure that's a real mentorship for me. And I can see a couple of people on the line that I've mentored um, and I'm just starting mentoring relationships. For me, it's about understanding the people and, and that connection is very, very important. It's also about, um, yes, having a few questions, but also having a conversation. 
Because yeah. the more I know about you, the more questions I can ask. You're going to ask the questions about the things you know you don't know. I might ask you questions about things you don't know you don't know. But I can only ask those questions if I know what you're doing, how you're doing it, where you're going. So some mentoring mentor relationships might be very structured. They might be about coming in prepared. They might be about, I need these questions answered and the mentor is going to answer. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is valuable. But I think a really deep in, uh, it's probably no surprising if I say I'm a relationship based person. That's how I live my life. So building a relationship. So I understand you. I understand your company. I understand your motivations. I understand what you want out of it. It means that I might ask you questions about things that you didn't even think we needed to discuss. So that's that's another tip for me. Oh. And having different types of mentors, a person like me and a person who's very structured can be a very good thing. I think Claire, for example, I think she might have dropped off the line, but Claire um, is, has, is, is mentored by me and by Matt, Matt Bullock. Now, I bet you Matt's got <laughs> to the point and have you done this, have you done this, have you done this, whereas my mentoring sessions with them are probably very different, and that's good. Yes. Yeah, uh, right? di diversity. Yeah, they're both great, what? though. Oh, yeah, oh, thanks, absolutely. Blue, there you are. And, and they're I both think, weekly, so it's like, ooh. I think, oh, I think Matt, uh, Matt would be a great contrast to me. I really do. Yeah, uh, in, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. And I think, I think that diversity, I think, um, uh, you know, you, you build a relationship and over time get to know each other and actually uh, more value can, you know, that's sometimes when the real deep value happens. Um, you, you can you can meet Richard Branson in the in the um, elevator and give him a great pitch and he'll make a smart comment, very top 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 entrepreneur and all of that sort of thing. But um, he doesn't know that much about your business, you know. Um, so uh, building a relationship over time, I think, is super important and and it brings out that ability, as Anne Marie said, to 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 actually discuss things you don't know what you don't know. The 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 uh, and to me, that's sometimes the most important stuff, which is, um, you know, the surprising conversation or at least surprising to you. Yeah. And just one other comment mm. that I wanted yeah. to make on, on, um, on the slides that Craig put up. Yeah. When he said you drive the mentoring relationship, I think it's really, really important that you remember, and, and Craig did say it, but I'm just going to say it in capital letters. You, it is your company. You are the CEO. It's not school, and I'm not the teacher. And I might ask you to think about things, and if we've got a sort of more structured mentoring relationship like I have with Claire and Caitlin and Anna Maria there, then I might say, you know, think about this and let me know next week and we'll talk about it. But at the end of the day, I'm not a teacher marking your homework. You have to drive your company and I'm there to, to aid. In my case, one of my greatest strengths is not like a Matt Bullock who's going to dig right into your technical stuff. Are you doing the platform right? Are you making it right? You know, da, 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 da. I'm going to listen to the business model you have, the business questions you have. What answers do you need? And I might not have all the answers. I often don't. But I probably know who does. I and like so it. then it's that connectivity. So um, just remembering that if you want good mentoring, you have to seek the mentors out and you have to make it easy for them. Claire and Caitlin said, how often do you want to meet? When can we put it in? And it's in our diaries for every week. Now, of course, that means if I'm busy, I can say, Claire, I'm taking my dog to the vet. Can we change it? But basically, they're driving the, the mentoring discussions. Yeah, awesome. Um, look, everyone, I want you to feel, feel free to uh, pipe up with, with questions from the audience. Um, uh, in a smallish group like this, you can just unmute yourself and ask, or you can put something on the chat if you feel shy. Um, uh, while we... I have a question. Okay, already, go clear. That's okay. Go clear. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, Emery, you mentioned um, mentor whiplash. 
what do you like which I love that concept I think that's really cool but how do you avoid that without being too stubborn with your approach I think what what you need to do is this is where getting a wide variety of views is a really good idea because as Craig quite rightly said two mentors could give you completely different advice because remembering mentors are human they've got experiences and they've got expertise but they're answering from their own experience I mean we had a situation Craig is involved in the company now this wasn't um, this was later stage in Griffin when it was board members and investors and we're investors in this company and one investor had a very I don't think he's doing this right, this right, this right. Yeah, some from the table. And, said, and Craig knows exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. And I said, I disagree with you. <laughs> yep. I would find that difficult too. I disagree with you. We've got to have a different approach for him because I 100% agree with him. And, you know, but if, if that entrepreneur was listening to that guy, he would be, oh, I've got to do this. I've got to do this. I've got to do this. And it was stuff that wasn't going with his strengths. It was some, hey, this guy was trying to force him to do things that he wasn't good at, instead of saying, how can we get something in underneath him? Now, the guy, the, the investor who was making that comment or the mentor who's making that comment, that's in his sweet spot. That's easy stuff for him. Whereas if that same entrepreneur is talking to me, I'd be talking to him very differently about how to resolve that issue. In this instance, it's not that I'm right and the other guy's wrong. In this instance, my skills get is more similar to the <laughs> CEO. So it probably resonated better with the CEO. But you're going to often have people that will tell you to do two different things. So what you have to do is rather than just blindly trying to follow and please that mentor who said, here's your task. That's why I said mentors aren't school teachers. They're not grading you. At the end of the day, it's your company. You have to listen and say, he says, I've got to go and do X. But I don't even know how to do that. Mm. And turn yourself inside out trying to do it. And then someone else comes along and goes, no, no, you should do Y well, do I do X or do I do Y? So if you've got quite, then you sit down dispassionately and work out where are we going? How does this advice fit in to where we're going? And how does it fit into my skill set? If I can't do it, how do I, and I need to do it, how do I get the skills to do it? Is that me learning or is that me getting somebody on board who can help me with it? And it might even be going to a third mentor and saying, how do, how can, how yeah, do I resolve this? <laughs> me, have you got any thoughts how I could resolve this uh, tension? Um, so there's, a, uh, yeah, lots of things. Uh, Harold's asked, and if you want to add to this, uh, Harold, you asked, should you choose mentors that challenge you? Do, do you want to unpack that at all? Uh, look, I, I, it, Harold, um, it'd be interesting to see what you're asking about that, but there's no harm in a mentor challenging you. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm on a phone today. It's a bit weird. Um, yeah, I, I guess um, yeah. depends how uh, much or how what well not tolerant, but how you know how willing you're willing to receive honesty, I suppose. And, and not, look, I know, like I rejected Peter and Craig when they first tried to help me, um, and um, had to go through a bit of a process to understand where they were coming from and I just ended up going back to my credit, their credit. <laughs> um, but, but this, you know, that wasn't an obvious match, you know, there's friction there. So, you know, I, I understand it's personal, but also sometimes the people that really you don't get on with are the ones you need, you know, that's what, that's what I was asking for. You know, how far do you go with that? Yeah. Well, I think there's a difference between, you know, challenging and, and, and feeling that you're rubbing up the wrong way against someone it's always easier to get help from someone who you feel you get along with that doesn't mean I mean just because I like Claire and I like Caitlin doesn't mean I shouldn't be honest with them if I think they're heading down the wrong path or I think that um, they they probably need a little bit of a reality check about what's possible. I remember listening to a, a presentation. I was sitting with Nick Norton at Tech 23 and these guys were saying that they had this great solution. It was around swimming pools and, you know, they, 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 
their projections were X, Y, Z. And Nick and I are sitting there and these guys had been selling like one a month over the past little while, yet in the next 12 months to fulfill their projection, they had to sell something like 50 a week. Now, clearly that might be possible in two or three years time, but that wasn't reasonable with going from this 12 months to next 12 months. Mm because they physically couldn't even install 50 a week. And so sometimes mentors have to sort of look and go, mm, is that actually, they have to run the reasonableness test over what you're saying. And that requires honesty. And sometimes that can be hard to listen to. But, you know, if you're an entrepreneurial CEO, you've embarked on the biggest challenge ever anyway. Um, that is not an easy task. And, you know, you need to be uh, determined and you need to be persistent. But if you really, really want to be an Atlassian or a Canva or even half that, you really need to be able to have people check you because, you know, there's a plenty of people who built a solution and looked for a problem and then wondered why they could couldn't do it and then five or six years later someone's come out with their idea and turned it into millions um so you always have to test everything yeah i i, I was just going to add one other thing to that i think if you're feeling uncomfortable in a conversation or uncomfortable with the feedback you're getting you should stop and reflect why do i feel uncomfortable and you can really you can split that into good reasons to feel uncomfortable i'm i'm being i'm uncomfortable because that person's talking about something i didn't really want to hear or you know bad reasons to feel uncomfortable the person's not being respectful to me or various other things right and so you definitely want to avoid the bad reason uncomfortable um but if you if you think you know what i didn't like hearing that but but i see why they said it or i see what was going on i think that's what you should reflect about and i also do think that at the heart of your mentoring relationship, there should be a respect for each other and you should want to work with each other. If you really, you know, that your mentor rubs you up the wrong way or whatever, you that's not the right mentor for you. Mentor's meant to bring out the best in you and or help you bring out the best in you. Yeah. And they're not going to do that if you really don't get on with them. Yeah, awesome. They can challenge um, you, but at the heart of it, you do want to have you want to have some foundation of a relationship. Otherwise, it's not much fun for either party. I don't want to be in a men. I don't want to mentor someone I don't get on with. Sorry. Totally. Uh, so Felix has his hand up, but I'm just going to quickly bring another uh, question off the chat. Um, when your mentor is life-wise or has uh, I'm extrapolating great experience, but not knowledgeable about your particular industry. How do you manage that? Um, do you want to respond to that, Anne-Marie? Um, it depends on what you want them to mentor you on. Mm -hmm. If you're all an expert in your industry, do you really need them to mentor you on your industry? Yeah. Aren't you wanting them to mentor you on a business model? Aren't you wanting them to mentor you on how you grow a company? Aren't you wanting them to mentor you on those sorts of things? So that's the first thing yep. I would say. And that goes back to having a wide range of mentors. Heck, except for the fact that I'm very happy to use her product, I know nothing about running a hairdressing salon or cutting hair except that I know who does my hair well, yet I think Claire and I are getting on pretty well, aren't we, Claire? And I couldn't invent the stuff that Caitlin's inventing and her team are inventing to save my life, but I think I get it and I can certainly help her grow a company. I can certainly help her take it out of academia and grow a company. Um, depends on what you want from them. If industry knowledge is important to you at the time, then you need to find a mentor with that industry knowledge. Yeah, but otherwise, look at what you want from them. And, and also for industry knowledge, sometimes it's, uh, it's about experts and, or somebody who can more join your team, really part of the team rather than being the mentor. It's not the, is another way of getting that industry knowledge into your team. And also you need to engage with and maybe a mentor can help you to engage with those experts or engage with the industry and and, and that sort of stuff 
Um, Felix, you had a question? Yeah, uh, thanks, Craig. Um, my question, uh, I hope it doesn't come across the wrong way. Firstly, thanks so much for your time today. Um, clearly, uh, you know, some really interesting insights. So we're a startup in Canberra. We have talked to lots of people. We went through the Idea to Impact program, which is amazing. Um, we looked at Griffin Accelerator, but we weren't ready for investment. So we were really attracted by the mentors in the Accelerator, but we weren't ready to kind of um, do the investment piece. I guess my question is what, what should you, or what is the cost for a mentor? What's a reasonable cost? So is giving up a piece of the company for the right mentor something you know that, that you'd expect people to do or is that something that not everyone would do? I, oh, Craig, I've never charged for mentoring. I don't think I've, I, on a couple of occasions, I've mentored a couple of companies and it's been so involved and hands-on that in the end, they gave me a small percentage of the company felt because they felt guilty because they took it so much of my time. Um, I think, I think, bef I think you've got to know that they're the right mentor for you before you do anything like that. And maybe if you're not, got ready access to mentors because you're not in a program like Griffin maybe you can consider something like an advisory board which is doesn't come with the same liabilities and responsibilities that a, a, um, a board does so you can invite people onto an advisory committee or an advisory board without putting them at any risk of liability and then you know engage with some people um, who can help you. Now, you might pay a small fee to have people on an advisory committee, but if you get the right people, it, it works really well. Um, I had one where I started on an advisory committee for a really small, it was more a, um, a small amount of money, not so much because I wanted fees. It was more to uh, make it more important to them Make it, make it feel like if we've got an advisory committee, we really are going to seek advice from it. And eventually they asked me to move from that advisory committee to the board and I get remunerated as a board member should. The other thing to do is just seek out mentors. Um, I mean, I know it's tough at the moment because we haven't been able to have First Wednesday Connects and all of those things live, but going to those events where you meet people and have those second question conversations and over time you tend to find people who you gravitate to who have skills that could be really useful and informally seek out some yep. mentors that would be a first way my problem with starting a relationship with paying is that you might be locked into one where the mentor's really not the right mentor for you that's the only thing. But if you do have a relationship and they are doing a lot for you and they're bringing you valuable contacts, then, you know, engaging them more um, in a more concrete way is a relationship yeah. with... Thank, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Um, uh Sorry, I've, I've got to do a school run. I just want to ask a real quick question. Sure. Um, my name's Paul Byrne. This is my first one in. How do I go about, um, I'm, I've, I've started the process for the ICON grant. Mm -hmm. um, so just want to know how to go about getting a mentor um, with you guys. I think, Craig, that's you. I think uh, you Totally. So uh, keep engaging. Come along to... Uh, uh, these sort of events, um, meet a, you need to meet a, multiple people. You find the right connections. Does that make sense? Uh, and well, I've had a meeting already for the guys doing the Icon grant, but in terms of getting an ongoing mentor, mentoring relationship, like a weekly thing that you guys were talking about, how do I get that going? Well, so um, the structured or in-depth uh, mentoring, there's, uh, is in, a, in terms of our program delivery, it's really lives in the Griffin Accelerator, but we do lots of intros and try and connect you to people and see if you find somebody it typically starts much lower touch than you know intensively meeting every every okay. so week. if i go on to the, if i go on to the griffin what's it called griffin accelerator if i go google griffin accelerator and go through that web Site that, could, and... that could be an option. Unfortunately, we run it once a year and and, and this cohort oh, going okay. at the moment. So next year, by all means, engage with it. It's a it's an opportunity to 
uh, it's one of the ways that we've been able to really accelerate companies and really good. But don't wait. Uh, engage with people already. Uh, when you're talking to people in... Well, what do you mean when you say engage with people? Like, well, who, which people am I engaging with? Well, anyone you can find. At, Events at Canberra Innovation Network is a great start. I know that they've been few and far between, but they're opening up. Um, lots yeah. of people go, have lots of conversations. And, they're um, the people I went through yeah. for the ICON grant. Yeah. So, you, yeah, so Paul, you meet our team, and and we'll always we'll always be looking out for a mentor more mentor intro. But you know, it's not every time got the exact right answer. Absolutely. Sometimes it takes Absolutely. a while. Uh, and okay. we're talking about other events, uh, and yep. you might meet someone at an event, come to a hackathon, all of these things. You never know. Yep. What, and mentorship's a bit like. I sometimes say a bit like dating. It's like you've got to meet a bunch of people and find the people who somehow connect you. Paul, another part of that is uh, you're looking, and I think generally for mentorship, especially early stage, you're looking for people who are a bit excited about what you're doing. There's yeah, sure. some, something that you're doing is exciting to, well, exciting, a little bit exciting to everyone, but more exciting to a few people who are just really into that. Um, if it's okay, I'm going to move along to ilea has got a question. Thank you. Hi, Emery. Um, I have no issues reaching out to mentors when I have questions and that kind of thing. But I suppose what I struggle with is for the regular catch ups. Mm -hmm. um, if you have them and then you don't have like this burning topic you want to discuss, but then, you know, some of the real value is those inter incidental conversations and how to, um, you know, just how it flow and not everyone's as easy going and, um, you know, conversational as you, so. <laughs> well, I, I, I think that in that case, then talking to the different mentors about what works for them. So, for example, for me, you know, Aaliyah, I mean, I know Aaliyah personally, I'd catch up with Aaliyah for a cup of coffee just to shoot the breeze. So um, it doesn't have to be a mentoring discussion. Um, and same with any of the, the people that I've mentored. I don't need, I don't, need to walk away and think I solved a problem. Um, if I'm having an interesting conversation, I'm, I, I don't mind giving up my time. So, um, and I don't even see it necessarily as giving up my time because I see it as me learning as well. But if you've got mentors who are time poor and who are more structured, because I know <laughs> I'm not your typical technologist. I work in R&D with tech guys all the time. And I joke that after all these years of doing it, I'm almost fluent in geek and engineer. But, um, you know, I know that there are some people that I deal with that I feel like I'm talking to in dot points. And I know that if I talk to another person like that, they'd think I was upset with them. So I guess it's about understanding each individual mentor. And if you've got a mentor who you feel you've got to have topics to discuss, to meet up with them, um, ask them. Say to them, look, I find our catch-ups, regu our regular catch-ups really useful and really interesting, even if we're not dealing with a specific problem, but I know you're busy. So do you, uh, do you mind if we have a fortnightly catch-up, even if there's not a specific issue to resolve? And if they say, oh, like, I'm really busy, you know, just yeah, just come to me on an ad hoc basis when you've got an issue to, to discuss, we'll do that. But there's an awful lot of them. Let me tell you, I love a good conversation, but I love a lot of the mentors really love somebody asking them their opinion on something. So chances are they'll still catch up just to talk about other things because, and I'm not saying that because they're arrogant or, or anything like that. It's just, it's really nice to have somebody come to you and say, what you can tell me is valuable. I mean, who's not going to enjoy that? Hey, is anyone sitting on here doesn't want to talk to somebody? Because if someone's going to say to them, I think your views are really interesting or important, you're going to love it, aren't you? And mentors are the same. They're people. So just deal, deal with them and ask, be honest, ask the question. Yeah. You know? And I look and I, I just want to pull out something Anne Marie said that I just want to really emphasize. Uh, if in doubt, ask for permission. Hmm. 
I'd like to just have an unstructured chat. Uh, is that okay? Would you like that? And, and just ask it in a way where the answer no is acceptable and somebody might say no, or they might surprise you while there and say, actually, I'd love to just, let's just <laughs> chat. And by the way, I really encourage everyone in that because um, sometimes those unstructured chats is where some of the best insights come out of, right? And, and it's almost a surprise to both parties. Suddenly think, wow, what about this? Um, so, but, so ask. And the other thing I, I mean, this isn't slightly off mentoring. This is more around investing. But there's been a number of times when people that I've been mentoring are looking for money. Let's face it, if you're entrepreneurs, nearly every single one of you is either looking for money now or will be in two minutes time. And I say to them or introduce them to people who really, you know, back to that in your industry, understand your industry, understand what you're doing, but also are people who potentially might invest. And I always say to the entrepreneur, don't go in there and say, hey, Craig, will you invest my company? Go in there and say, hey, Craig, Anne-Marie's connected with you because you can give me an appraisal of what I'm doing and, and you know, let it, I introduce them and I say they would really benefit from a conversation with you about what they're doing and get your insights and um, advice on how they could enhance what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And again, as I said, it's very flattering to be asked for your opinion. And in this town, most of the entrepreneurs that we know, most of the really successful guys, the mentors, the investors, a really giving of their time. So you go in and you present it to them, not as a pitch, but a, I'd really love to seek your input. You start building a relationship and guess what? If they really get on with you, if they really like you, they might invest in you as well. Because top tip, we're talking mentoring, but investing, most investors invest in the entrepreneur, entrepreneur not the idea. So they wanna to get to know you first. Absolutely. Um, so we're getting pretty tight on time. Uh, Tristan's just asked on the chat about any tips to avoid being taken advantage of or question what he's worried about. He's been questioning motives. Uh, Tristan, I think if you feel uncomfortable in that way, you're, you're hearing yeah. a signal, aren't you? Um, it's like if you're dating and you get some, you know, so in the, especially in the early days, you know, you um, so Try and reflect on why you feel like that. And if there's some substance to it, I, you know, maybe that's not the right. It, now, that doesn't mean the person you're talking to is bad. It may just be not the right fit for yeah. you. And, and um, taking Harold's point before, that some of the advice that Peter and Craig were giving him early on was advice he didn't want to hear. So try and ask yourself dispassionately, is it advice I don't want to hear or is it wrong advice yeah uh, and last thing Tristan when you know if if part of your uncomfort is because you feel like you're not experienced in a certain area go get a second opinion uh manjula has got a question and I think it might have to be the last because we really are nearly out of time yeah uh hi everybody it's a quick question so if I meet somebody at a networking session we build a relationship get on emailing but nothing has been formalized as a mentor and mentee, but then the person is helping when you reach out for questions and advice. Do you actually formally take that relationship like I'm considering you to be as a mentor and I'll be seeking your advice or just leave it as casual and? You, you could do either. I mean, usually I'd say leave it in casual until you can get to a point where you might say to them rather than I'm considering you as a mentor. I wouldn't do that so much because you're asking something of them. So I would do what a couple of people have done for me in the past. And they've said, I would be really honoured if you would be my mentor. I, you know, and I've actually had people like take me out for coffee and say, look, I really want to thank you for your help. And I just wondered, would you more formally be my mentor? I really would appreciate it. And I've had that either as um, after I left an organization, a young woman who used to work for me, um, used to seek me out. And then she sat, she took me out for coffee one day and asked me. That was in a, her personal professional capacity. But I've also had it from people like Clyde and Dane. They did the same thing. 
and uh, and a couple of others. So you know, obviously, mentors can only mentor so many people. But if you've built that relationship and they're already responding to your questions, most people are pretty flattered that you would think that they would be. I mean, I don't know about you, Craig, but I think a lot of the people I know and the mentors at um, at Canberra Innovation Network and the Capital Angels and people that I know would be flattered that you feel that they've given you such valuable advice and that you feel so comfortable with them that you would actually like to ask them to be your mentor. And to, to make it, uh, what you're asking is to make it a little bit more sort of clear, locked in long term. So you get to know somebody and say, look, I'm really enjoying this. Can we do more? Uh, and, 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 and as Anne-Marie said, ask for permission. I do want to just say there's a, there's a gradation there where you, 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 you know, you've got to be careful. Don't ask for, well, or, or it's okay to be told, no, you're asking too much. So make that okay. Also, there's a gradation into, you might be actually asking somebody to in the end do work for you that starts to look like what ought to be a paid role as a company director or other things like that, uh, or a technical advisor. So, And, and uh, that's back to Felix's question. So yep. understand when, it, when it's going into that more formal and going yep. into that level of work where it is, you know, you want to keep them engaged. You know they're adding real value to you. So that's when you say, you know, would you join an advisory committee and we, can, we can't we can remunerate you a lot, but we can give you this or we can give you some shares in the company or something like that. You know, if you really want to lock them in at that point, the question that Felix asked is really good because at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of generous people, but you can't do everything for everyone for nothing forever. <laughs> Look, and, and so, and you'll find different mentors or different people have, have a, a you know, have different tolerances for that sort of thing, ask and explore. So don't be shy to ask. Um, so I'm going to have to wind up at this point because our hour is over. Um, thank you very much. I think you'd all agree that Anne-Marie is an awesome fountain of wisdom and she's brought in a bunch of really interesting thoughts, avoiding mentor whiplash, ask the second question, build a relationship so that you get that, insight that you didn't even ask for um, ask for permission if you if you're thinking where do I want to go don't be afraid to ask um, so thank you very much Anne-Marie thanks everyone for being part of this now we're heading towards the end of lockdown oh sorry Anne-Marie did you want to say I just something? said my pleasure because <laughs> I can see all these things that are coming up here so mm. I'm saying my pleasure to everybody absolutely thank absolutely you. Um, <laughs> Now we are locked down the sort of the ends inside, I hope. So we're going to wind this uh, weekly series up in a couple of weeks, but I've got two more great ones for you. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about funding and developing prototypes. Uh, we're going to have three or four panel members who've received Innovation Connect grants and hear about their experiences and dig into what worked well and what, the, what were the learnings so you can do better. And then our last session, the week after that, I've got... Um, uh, Professor Tim Hurst, a professional angel investor, chair uh, involved in the Griffin Accelerator and many other things, and he's gonna. Uh, we're gonna have a conversation with him about structuring your company or setting it up for success. Uh, what are the things you're gonna wish you did later? Um, and really try and have a really interesting conversation about what you know. A bunch of those. Um, questions about preparing for success almost so they'll be on our website shortly um, please register please tell your friends uh, thank you everyone for attending and just being awesome entrepreneurs really appreciate that uh, I hope you found it of some value and uh, we'll wind up by thanking Anne-Marie one last time thanks thank you <laughs>